Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host, Jennifer. Today should be March 3rd, not now March 3rd, <laughs> March 1st, the third day of Premiere Week. Now the reason I say should be is because I, I'm pre-recording a whole bunch of videos. And this video is special because as of the recording of this video, I'm just unboxing some yarn that is brand new on Premier Yarns website today. And um, we're going to be starting a tutorial that I have not yet started yet. So these videos are, I'm breaking up to, this video is going to be broken up into three sections. We're doing an unboxing. We're doing an intro to the project that we're working on, which I'm planning a tank top. And then we're going to do the tutorial, but I have to record them out of order. Like, let's be real. <laughs> I'm recording the unboxing of the yarn because I just have to unbox it first. Then we record the tutorial and then I come back and film the introduction, which will come on after this part of the video. Because that's the way we have to do it because I haven't made the tank top yet. So we have to like, you know, little baby steps. <laughs> so... I am an affiliate from Premier Yarns. We know this already. It's one of the main reasons I do Premier Weeks because I really like promoting a company that I'm proud to work with. And the affiliates will often get boxes, surprise boxes. We don't even get told half the time that we're getting them. And they just show up on our doorstep. And it's like this magic little white box with all this really cute print on the side. It shows up on our doorstep and we have sometimes brand new yarn that no one else has ever seen in the world. I mean, obviously Premier Yarn saw it because they boxed it. They approved the yarn that they were going to be putting on the market. So this box is unique and special in the fact that um, I requested extra yarn to go in this box. So this box came to me with one yarn, but I asked for a secondary yarn. I'll explain in a minute. So we open it up. And these boxes are fun because you open it up and it says make it pre hashtag make it premiere. If you make anything with premiere yarns, if you put the hashtag make it premiere, they sometimes will share your images on their social media. So premiereyarns.com, they're on Instagram, they're on the Tiki Takis, Facebook, Pinterest, and the YouTubes. Now, and then they give us this really cool flyer with the new yarns. <laughs> and then it's always wrapped really pretty. I rewrapped it because I put the newer the yarns I requested. I put those in here too. So this is an old favorite of mine. <laughs> it is Cotton Sprout, but they have new Cotton Sprouts. So the solid colors are the, the ones we've seen before, but they also come in speckles and they come in worsted. And not just worsted, but it comes in worsted, multicolored, and just worsted. So I'm going to show you all these beautiful lusciousness. I'm so, so excited. This video, I've been waiting on this video. Now I did contact Premiere. I was like, okay, because because Premiere did tell me this box was coming ahead of time. They're like, there's a new cotton sprout coming out, and they're sprinkles, they're speckles. I love speckly yarn. I love yarn. It's one of my favorite yarns. I get so excited when it has little dots or little speckles of color. I get so excited. And I already love the cotton sprout. Let me show you. I think I still have it in here. This is an old tutorial. This is not the tutorial we're doing today. <clears throat> this yarn. Well, some of this yarn. This is my spring fling t-shirt tutorial. That was it blew up when I made this tutorial. It blew up. It went crazy. This is made with the hipster cotton and the cotton sprout together. Okay. So, in case you don't know, the hipster cotton is amazing. It it comes in beautiful colors. And it pairs up beautifully with the cotton sprout. But now there's the cotton sprout worsted too. So, we'll, we'll discuss that as well. Because I think, I, I just think that this might replace the hipster as my favorite. It's just, I haven't, I don't know yet, but like, I think it might. <laughs> I do love the hipster though. I'm going to be real honest. I still have a whole bunch of it. So I made this tutorial using the hipster cotton and using the cotton sprout as the, the accent color. So I have experience. I really like the way it works up. It makes nice garments. If you guys made the spring fling t-shirt, you guys already know. Like it's a fun, it's a fun pattern and it works up beautifully, but 
So when I saw this, the new colors, I was super excited because up until now, it was just solid colors, right? These beautiful solid colors and that blue you saw and I made one out of the green. Gorgeous, right? This yarn is really soft. It's really nice. It's a three weight. Um, it's 176 yard. I'm reading off the paper because like my eyesight is like, I don't want to be, you know, tromboning to see it. <laughs> And I am, I'm a little bit under the weather currently, but I'm, I'm mending, so I am taking care of myself. <coughs> so we got, we got, they sent me some of the solids that we know and love. And then they sent me some of the beautiful, this is so pretty, <laughs> some of the speckles. But they sent it to me in colors that all coordinate. So you have this beautiful speckly yarn, right? This is the color Sunny. Look at those beautiful colors, right? But the cotton sprouts coordinate. So you see how there's yellow on there? Yellow. It's not the exact same yellow, but like it goes. I'm telling you, it goes. So our tank top is going to be so much fun because we're making it out of a mixture of the speckles and the solids. So, like I said, this is the color Sunny. This is the cotton sprout speckles. There is 194 yards in this. Wait a minute. Their paper is backwards. <laughs> Their paper says 176 yards, 194 meters. The label says 194 yards, 178 meters, so it's reversed. Okay. Yeah. So, one of those is wrong. It's fine. It's fine. And, and the label so pretty. Cotton sprout. It's got a little cotton plant on there. A cotton plant. Alright, so the color yellow is yellow so those go together right but then they sent me this beautiful gorgeous orchid color and it's called orchid i think i might have some more of this i have to look at my stash i know that there's look at that purple purple here pur it goes it's so pretty right so now we got the yellow and the speckle and the purple and then they sent me this is cardinal. <laughs> this is not red. <laughs> it's, it's cardinal, but it's not red. It's um, it's pink. It's pink. It's like um, and it's not quite. I mean, that's almost accurate. It's a little more pink than that. It's showing up a little orange. I don't know if that made a difference. It's a little ish that, and then. Cadet blue. So, so pretty. And then this one has, let me see, are these all sunny? Yeah, they're all sunny. There is blue in this one, but this one's not showing it. So I'll grab a different one. See, it's got the blue. Let me fix my light again. It's got blue in there. So beautiful, so beautiful. That's got the little blue showing right there. There we go, a little bit of blue right there. There's a little bit of blue under there. So that's what they sent me all these beautiful, fantastical colors. But you know me, I'm like, okay, but. Can I have some of the worsted too? Because I would really like to try that out. Because I have I promoted the heck out of the cotton sprout when it first came out. Because I love this yarn. It is a really nice cotton. And the fact that they're re-releasing this gorgeousness right at premiere week. It just, it was meant to be. It just, it was, it was perfect. It was perfect timing. So... I asked, I was like, okay, can you, can you just please, can I have some worsted? And, you know, I had to go through the chain of command, and they were like, yeah, we can send you some, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, all right, now, the con sprout in the plain colors comes in lots of different colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four. So it comes in, I don't what is eight times four? It's in 32 colors. It's comes in 32 beautiful colors. It comes in like eight shades of blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and a half shades of blue. Because one of them is like on the edge of being almost something like gray. 
but these are the colors it comes in beautiful beautiful rich colors I used this for one of the shirts last one of the spring fling shirts the lime color and then that blue over there I think is the turquoise I think this is the turquoise I'm almost positive and it's a hundred percent cotton yarn so it says machine wash warm tumble dry I'm gonna tell you to not to I mean machine wash on warm is okay I'm personally gonna tell you to wash it on cold and then like kind of be sensitive with the dry because cotton can shrink it can and you don't want to make a garment and shrink it so even though it says that you can do that but keep in mind if you're making a garment you can get shrinkage with cotton so it's a hundred percent cotton yarn has a soft hand and a delightful spring and summer palette I feel like I'm reading about a nice wine or something. <laughs> Perfect for garments and accessories. I agree entirely. The natural fibers are machine washable and create long lasting projects. Like I said, it says you can machine wash warm, but I am not making a shirt to shrink it. So like, just be careful with it, with how much heat you apply to, especially in the drying process. Um, the speckled says the same thing. Oh, I didn't give you the yardage for the... These are 230 yards for this, for the solids. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The speckled comes in nine different colors, and I am for all of them. I think all of them are beautiful. I think maybe two I wouldn't necessarily be like crazy about, but I, I'm just loving these colors. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I am so excited. I am so excited about working these up. Now, the worsted weight, the worsted weight cotton is, obviously it's in a different packaging. <laughs> and I don't have the prices for these yet because they have not been released. But, actually Cotton Sprout is on their website. I'm gonna check the Cotton Sprout price right now while we're talking. Because that is available. Oops. Con Sprout. It's $4.99 a ball. And I assume, I could be wrong, that the new colors are going to be the same price and that the worsted should be the same price, I hope. Alright, so, now I have to show you the colors of these on my phone because when I asked for more of these, I asked for specific colors and I asked for, um, they sent me an email with the information that's on the card. You, if Because what they did was they're like, okay, some of y'all are going to get the worsted weight and some of y'all are going to get the DK weight. And they sent me the DK weight because I've already worked with it and I love it. And I'm all for it, okay? <laughs> so the worsted comes in. One, two, three, four. Exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The same amount of colors. And it looks like it's the same colors as the the... The DK weight also is the worsted weight colors. However, there's only six colors of the the fancy ones. We don't have speckles this time. We have more along the lines of the colors of the um, hipster, where it does this kind of cool effect, right? It's going to look kind of like this. So the DK version has speckles. The worsted version has like stripey type this kind of effect, which I love, <laughs> but totally different colors. All right, so I'm going to make this kind of big so we can all see it. All right, so these are the worsted multis. That's gorgeous. This one. <laughs> I like that one. Actually, I like all of them. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? Are those not beautiful, right? So, I asked for them to send me two of the multis in the color Luau, which I'm going to show you what's inside that because it looks just like the green and the blue, right? And then I asked them for two solids that coordinate. And now that I had took a little peek see inside there, I th think I probably should have ordered the pink too. Because <laughs> I'm thinking like, right? You see what I'm saying. <laughs> so, 
I'm going to give you guys a little peek see inside. I'm going to pull my skein apart. These are all the colors in the Luau. Let me find it on here. This is the paper they sent me. But that don't do justice for that. Because that don't even show the yellow. And I'm just here for this. I am here for this all day long. So, a little information on the worsted. This is worsted weight, so you're going to get yet less yardage for the same grams. So they're, they're all 100 gram balls, right? Yeah. But because this is thicker, it weighs more. So you're going to get yet less yardage. So the worsted, you get 180 yards. Look at this color, right? So this one is the color teal. And that goes pretty darn good with right here. And then I got the color blue, which, hello, mama. <laughs> right? I did good. <laughs> so they match beautifully, but then you're going to get these pops, these beautiful pops of the pink and the yellow, which I was like, I didn't know, because that picture don't show yellow. It don't show yellow. Like, you got a little tiny piece of yellow there. It don't show the yellow. So when I popped that open, I was like, Mm, let me check this other one too. Yep, it's there. <laughs> so I'm so excited. I'm so excited for these yarns because A, I love the cotton sprout already. I've already worked with it. I've made several garments out of it. I know what I'm getting with this yarn. You guys have been here for any amount of time. You've also possibly worked with it already. And the fact that they have speckles, which is my heart. It is my heart. <laughs> And these gorgeous colors, which are just like a continuation of the hipster yarns, which I love so much. I'm just, and they're worsted weight. They're worsted weight. So if you don't like, and they're a thin worsted weight. They are absolutely a thin worsted weight. But they're thicker than the, the DK. If you don't like working with a thin yarn, go with the, the worsted. And they feel, they feel like a really good cotton. That like, I'm loving it. I'm so excited. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Are these colors not so vivid? And that's another thing I love about the cotton sprout is sometimes cotton yarn will be like muted, okay? It'll be muted and it'll be dull and it just don't look like, I mean, it's even got a little sheen to it, right? <laughs> it's, just, it's beautiful. It's so pretty. Look at those colors, man. I'm telling you. All right, I'm totally, I'm needing some pink and some yellow to go with the worsted. I definitely do because look, right? Hang on. Bear with me. Let, me. let me expose that little color. Right. You guys are feeling it. I know you are. So, now we're going to be using the DK for the tank top because that is what I have the most of. And the tank top tutorial, which I have not started yet, is going to be... I'm going to make it in a 4X for my... Actually, I probably need a 3X. I lost a little bit of weight recently. I lost a lot of bit of weight recently. Um, I'm going to make a 3X slash 4X for my body. And um, I'm going to walk you through making it for your body. And just like all of my other garments... Just like my spring fling t-shirt and the other one that I can't remember the name of that I made. <laughs> like all of my shirts. You can make these for little kids. You can make these for as big as you want. You can. My tutorials come in all sizes. I'm going to show you how to make this tank top for your body. Whatever that looks like. Um, the top is going to be worked in a panel this way from what I'm planning in my head. Hopefully that works out or otherwise I'm going to have to cut this part of the video out. And then the bottom is going to flare out. I like that style personally for myself. I know not everybody likes the baby, baby doll style tops. But if you don't, you can make the sweater for Friday's video. And you know, there's lots of options here on the channel. I try to keep it open for everybody. Um, so definitely stay tuned for the rest of this video. The next section will be me introducing the yarn, kind of. I already kind of did that. But it's going to be introducing the yarn with the pattern and me showing you what the tank top looks like. And then following that will be the tutorial for the tank top. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. 
Is it summer yet? Because I got the cutest tank top and I'm ready to go. All right, so <laughs> here's the moment you've been waiting for. Here's the moment I've been waiting for all week. Uh, I oh, So I already showed you at the beginning of this video <laughs> the beautiful cotton sprout yarn that I am so excited has been released. Um, I have partial balls everywhere in here. So what you guys really want to know is about this tank top. So let me stand up and give you a little show of what the tank top looks like. Now, I made it handkerchief style. You can make it as long as you want. Okay, you can make this longer and it will get more blousey. But I just think that this is like a good length for me. It covers like my jean area. So the tank top is made going this way we made a bandeau and then we attached and worked it down this way in the round creating these cute little points and isn't this just cute i just really like this tank top i think i might add a little bit of length to it but this is our tutorial for today i literally just finished it i may add a little bit of length but i think it's really cute the way it is and i'm loving it we got this cute little i haven't weaved in the ends because i just finished crocheting we got this cute little peekaboo strap that is on the front and the back, which is super easy. And I show, I walk you guys through how to make this. This tank top is built off of your body. So no matter what size body it is, little kids could wear this all the way up to as big as a body gets. 5X, 6X, 8X if you need it. Like the sky's the limit. Because on this channel, we are all about body inclusivity. We want everyone to feel included. We want everyone to feel beautiful because you deserve it. And with that, <laughs> I love this tank top. I think it's so cute and I cannot wait to wear this all summer long. And no, I don't care that my bra straps are showing. It's fine. But isn't this cute? So, I just finished it. It's I love this yarn. I loved Cotton Sprout when it first came out. Um... Matter of fact, <laughs> in a prior video, last year or so, we made this t-shirt. I think this is my spring fling t-shirt. Um, and this beautiful blue on this shirt is the cotton sprout mixed with the hipster cotton, which go beautifully together, <laughs> by the way. Um, and I knew working with it here that I love the cotton sprout. This has just reaffirmed my love for it especially now that it's got the new speckled colors love the speckles i love the speckles they make me so happy this is very comfortable it's very it's got a little bit of a stretch to it it's comfortable it's soft and it's is breezy and airy so i had a lot of fun designing this tank top for you guys and for myself mostly for myself because <laughs> i'm super excited to wear this um mm. I show you in the tutorial how to build the tank top off of your body or anyone's body as long as you have the person around to do the measurements. Really the main measurement you need is around the chest area and how long your straps are going to be. The bottom of the garment kind of takes care of itself and because we're building increases on the corners it flows out away from your body a little bit. Um, it gives it a breezy feel to it. it. It it flatters the body. Like it's just really a cute design. I had this in my head for a couple weeks now, and I kept writing down notes. And I'm like, okay, well, I want it to have this. And and then I thought about the little peekaboo straps. I was like, I want it to have the peekaboo straps. And I just I was getting so excited, and I was like, okay, let's do this. And so when I sat down the tutorial that you're about to watch, um, I designed it as I was recording the tutorial so we kind of make it together for the first time and it's really a lot of fun and so i hope that you will enjoy this tank top as much as i have this is probably my favorite garment i have ever made i've made lots of plus size tops this one to me is special this one to me is just cute and fun and colorful and it makes me feel pretty and i hope it makes you guys feel beautiful too and so yeah the cotton sprout is amazing yarn. I, I highly suggest the colors are so saturated and beautiful. And it has a nice, had a hair in my mouth. It has a nice softness to it. 
the yarn has just a nice it works up so nice and those colors are just <laughs> they're so cheerful and beautiful and I really like the way the the speckles match up with the solids because there's yellow here and then yellow here and then I wasn't sure the cardinal would match but there's spots where the cardinal matches and then this cadet blue is just it's so pretty it's so pretty so I really really like this I think I am probably gonna add a couple more rows just you know why not but the amount of yarn that I used on the size 3 slash 4x that I created for my own body I used almost three of these I think I'm gonna use the this entire one on the bottom so I think three of the speckled and then I used partial skeins of the solids so I think total maybe five balls total for a size 4x shirt would work because I used almost all the purple because the purple is the waistband which gives us this cute little hourglass illusion <laughs> so I used the purple on the straps and the the belt so I used a lot of the purple I used almost all of the purple let, let me let me show you well no I only used half of the purple so half of the purple and half of the the blue some glad that was a metal hook some of the pink and some of the yellow so I'm gonna say I used the equivalent of probably five six to be careful I think by the time I'm done it will be the equivalent of probably six balls of this total for my shirt I love this shirt I'm so happy with the way it turned out I need to pick my whole crochet hook up off the floor and um, yeah I really hope you enjoy this tutorial as well I know that you guys are gonna love this yarn because I do <laughs> I just I like the fact that it's spec and you don't have to do the stripes if you don't like the stripes you can do the whole thing in speckles and then maybe do like a colored strap and a colored belt but the whole thing can be in speckles just use your imagination I just use the colors that Premier Yarn sent me and I mix and match them on the garment and I really really like the way it turned out and so yeah I'm really happy with this whole list the whole week it's just made me so excited but this shirt has really made me happy so if you guys make this shirt which I really encourage you to make this shirt because summer months are come well summer months for us on the northern hemisphere <laughs> is coming up um, but then again like if winter months are approaching you guys in the southern hemisphere there's always going to be another summer after this so I do I really would love for you guys to make this shirt and I would love to see it on you and I would love to see it on all body sizes all body types because you can totally customize this to fit your body how you want it to be worn if you want it to have more of a flare at the bottom just add more in the increases so the increase on these corners is because I wanted it to be like a mild increase I just did one double crochet chain one one double crochet if you want to make the it more flowy and flow away from your body even more you can do two double crochet chain one two double crochet or one double crochet chain two one double crochet all in the same stitch for the increase you can change it up so that it flares out more if you have a larger like bottom half or it can you can do like I did which is just one like the smaller increase of the double crochet chain one double crochet in the corners to give it less of a flare you can do whatever you want it's your shirt but I show you how to do it the way I did this one and um I'm really really happy with the way it turned out uh, I mean, you guys can tell like I, I sound horrible but I'm so excited inside for this so please when you make this shirt because you're going to because you're gonna love it um, tag me tag me on all the socials so I can see it send me pictures of yourself wearing it or whoever you made it for wearing it and um yeah stay tuned the tutorial is coming up next for this beautiful tank top all right so we are going to be making a tank top now I'm starting with the cotton sprout speckled the top bodice part is going to be the speckled section of the the um, top I am using the yarn that Premier sent to me. So I am working with all of the colors that they sent me. I'm mixing and matching them together to create this garment. And because 
I the I, I plan on the bottom of the tank top being kind of flowy and open and um, striped. So to do that, I'm going to use the speckled because the the bodice part, the part that goes around your chest area, is going to be um, all one color. That's that's my vision. And since we're working this together, <laughs> it's the first time I made this tank top. We're gonna work it together. Um, yeah. So once again, this is the Cotton Sprout Speckles. It is a lightweight number three. I am using a five millimeter hook. So I'm going to say that if you want the stitches closer together, if you're worried about anybody seeing what's underneath your tank top, you can go a smaller hook because we are going to be basing this off of, I'm trying to center pull this ball and I don't know if it's going to work. Um, no, well, there we go. That worked well enough. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I totally forgot. I am going to say excuse my voice because I am still recovering from sickness. And yeah, we're we're gonna work this off. We're gonna base this worked off of our own body, or you can. I absolutely make this or someone else. I'm using a five millimeter hook. I want this to have loose stitches. I want it to be drapey and airy and I want it to breathe and all those things. So <laughs> the way we are going to work this garment is we are going to work a band around the breast area. So what we need to do is we all have different size chests. Okay. All of us do. Um, we need to make sure that we chain a starting chain big enough to go around that area so from the top of your cleavage to the under part where a high belt would sit or your bra band so we want that entire area covered so you're going to have to chain this according to your own body and you're going to have to measure it across what your chest is going to you know what your chest is so for me the dog is scratching at the door i'm gonna guess Maybe a chain of 40 to start, and then we'll try that out. Oops. I just did a slipknot. Like I said, this is a 5 millimeter hook. This yarn, um, the gauge swatch for it says 4 millimeter, but 5 is going to work. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whoops, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, definitely not big enough, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, I'm going to try that, so from the top of your cleavage up and over to where your bra band would be, I still need more, so I'm going to say 40, I'm going to start with 40. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So from like the top of where your cleavage would line up the center of your cup, up and over and underneath where your bra band is, that's how big we want this to be. Because it's going to be kind of empire style. So for me, that is the right length. So that is about, it's about 11 inches. It's about 11 inches for me. If you are smaller chested or smaller bodied, you obviously would make that shorter. If you're larger chested or larger bodied, just make it bigger. You just want it, we're working it like a bando. Like it's gonna go around our, our chest area. So we're gonna work it in a circle this way around like our, this is your chest, okay? We're working it this way. And then this bottom part, we're gonna work in the round coming down, okay? So, I hope that makes sense. You will have already seen the tank top finished by the time this part of the video airs. But for me, <laughs> I made it yet, so I don't know what it's gonna look like. It's just in my head right now. So I'm gonna just do half double crochets across and you, you don't have to chain extra to do the half double crochets because that extra two stitches is not going to make any bit of difference. Hey, 
Hey, Juju, can you feed the dogs? So they'll stop scratching at the door, barking at the door. You ever just have, like, so much background noise in your house, you feel like you're going crazy. Like, oh, my gosh. There's a constant occurrence here. This yarn is so cute. I love these speckly colors. You see how big that speckle is? I was expecting, like, because if you look at it, I was expecting, like, little, like, one stitch. Like that. This is only one stitch blue dot. I wasn't expecting a three stitch dot. That's cute. I was so excited. When I got the email that this box was coming and that they had new cotton sprout, I was so excited. I told my, I call her my handler. Um, the lady that is in charge and contacts all of the the affiliates. I told her, I said, I am so excited. Like, I love Cotton Sprout. <laughs> and she's like, well, thank you for your support on Premier Yards. Like, Hello, this is why I support Premier Yards. Like, this, exactly this. This beautiful, gorgeous yarn. This is why. It makes me happy. Not like a good speckly yarn. Mr. Cinnamon suggested because I'm I'm quickly running out of time to finish these tutorials. Like I am down to the straw. Like it, it's it's <laughs> I have less than a week to finish this tutorial, edit it, and upload it. And I'm making a whole top. And he he knows that stresses me out. Especially with me not feeling good. He's all, well, why don't you try making a smaller top? You know, you can make one in juju size or, you know, whatever. I was like, yeah, I could do that, but then I won't have a top. Like, I want a top. I want a top for myself. This yarn is cute. He's all, we'll just make a second one. And I'm like, no. I want a top. I want to be pretty. And today, here in my world, it's going to be 83 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know... I love warm weather. I'm so ready for this tank top today. I'm so ready for it. So we're just we're going along. We're doing half double crochets. And we're going to keep on doing half double crochets because I really love half double crochets. Now, I'm going to be raw honest with you. If you don't like half double crochets, you can do whatever stitch you want in this top part. You can do singles. You can do doubles. It doesn't matter. You can change it up if you don't like half double crochets. Because I know some people hate them. My friend Lama Mama Kayla, she's another YouTuber here. She hates half double crochets. So if she wanted to make this and use double crochets, it would absolutely work. Absolutely would work. You just, because you're measuring it, by the time we're done with this, we just need it to kind of snugly but not tight fit around our bosom area. I'm going to see how many ways I can use for chest and bosom in this video. Very different ways. So that's what it should look like. This is so pretty, you guys. I am so excited. So this is what we have so far. We're just going to work it going out. So we're going to just chain one and turn. And half double crochet. And just every once in a while count and make sure you still have whatever that starting stitch is. So for me it's 40. But yours could be 20, it could be 30, it could be 50. It does not matter. See how the stitches are not real tight together and it's kind of going to give me a little bit of an airy, um, breathable fabric. Not that cotton's not breathable. Cotton is breathable. And this is 100% cotton, so it's definitely breathable. But I just like, you know, especially in the summertime because it's so humid here. I just like nice and airy. So every couple of rows, just make sure, count as you go across to make sure you still have 40. Because I'm notorious for when I'm f I'm knitting or crocheting a flat, straight-sided panel of basic stitches. I'm notorious for adding or just subtracting stitches randomly and it'll start going in or going out. Like, I'm notorious for that. So just every couple of rows, count, make sure you still have 40. Or whatever your starting number is. This is so beautiful. I know, at least I think I know, when they send these boxes to affiliates, 
I don't necessarily think they pick out specific colors based on the affiliates because that would be they would have to know a bunch of us because a bunch of us get these boxes they would have to know but like sometimes I feel like these boxes are specifically curated for me and they pick the exact colorways I would have picked because I love I love these mixtures of colors I am not a huge fan of orange and yellow by themselves but when you mix orange and yellow with other colors like lilac or this this tealy blue color oh it just it lights my heart on fire I love it this is gonna be so pretty I'm so excited <laughs> I'm so excited and I just can't hide it I'm also feeling like I can get my voice back so I'm not as froggy as I was yesterday when I filmed the very beginning unboxing of this video all right this is what we're going to keep doing. I don't know how many rows it's going to take to get around our rib cage, but we're going to keep, and if this ends up being a little bit longer than your bra band, that's fine because it's, it is actually going to stretch out a little bit when we wear it because it's going to, you know, the weight of the garment is going to pull the stitches a little bit. It's going to all be fine. So even if it's a little bit shorter than what you thought you might need, that'll be fine too. It will all work out, I promise. This is going to be a really easy easy tutorial easy garment I got a special um, idea planned for the straps that I'm excited about it's just gonna be fun so we're gonna keep doing this I'm gonna keep working half double crochets if you're working singles or double crochets or even trebles might work um, just keep going and what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure it around your body and when it goes all the way around your body and meets in the front, then you're done. And then we'll, we'll come back to the next step. So, just keep on doing what you're doing. My measurement, my biggest measurement around the fullest part of my chest area will be about how far I want this panel to go. So if you have a tape measure handy, measure the fullest part. You want to make sure it, it kind of snugly wraps around there. You want it to have a little bit of support. You don't want it baggy up there. Um, you want it to like, you know, hold you in a little bit not 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 pinch you hold you in but like you want it to fit good all right I'm gonna finish this row I'm gonna pause the recording I'm going to finish crocheting this flap until it fits around my body and then we'll be back and I'll show you guys what to do. But for the moment, like look at these colors. <laughs> I'll be right back. Alright, so I have the band or bandeau that is just long enough to wrap around my body and I, the way I did it so it's easier for me is I measured it so it met in the front, but this is actually going to be the back seam. So what we're going to do is we're going to seam this up. If you want to use a mattress stitch, go ahead and use a mattress stitch. I'm going to use a slip stitch join. So I'm just going to slip stitch the two pieces together. So I just folded it in half so that the two ends meet. And as you can see, when I got to that point, I just put a stitch marker in there. I'll hold it and because we have been working back and forth in a row on this there's not a right side or a wrong side of this fabric there just is two sides to the fabric so it doesn't matter what sides meet each other I'm trying to line it up so that I'm crocheting in the correct direction all right so to do a slip stitch join We are just going to make sure 
First of all, make sure you have 40 stitches or 30. I actually ended up with 39 because I didn't do an extra turning chain when I made the chain. So I have 39 stitches here. Make sure you have 39 in this row and 39 in that row. And make sure they're lined up. If you have to come along and put stitch markers in here to keep them lined up, you can go ahead and do that. I do that frequently. It just, and make sure that the fabric, because sometimes when you crochet, the fabric will slide. And so I just put a couple of stitch markers. These are my Jingle Bell stitch markers my daughter made me in her Rainbow Bee Beads Etsy shop. So just line it up as best you can. That helps keep everything from shifting because every time, every time I do something like this, it shifts. All right, and we're just going to go through all of the rows or all of the, the words. Words escape me sometimes. Make sure you go through both of the parts of the stitch. So there should be a V and a V. And you want to go through all of those and just slip stitch. And that's how we're going to join it. You can also, if you don't like the look of the slip stitch, you can put a seam back there. A seam is not going to change the way the garment looks. Um, and, and by making a seam, you can just do single crochet. Perfectly fine either way. And like I said, you could also sew this closed using the mattress stitch. It will give you a flat almost seamless look to it but I don't mind having a seam at the back of your shirt like garments often have seams and that way I can tell the front from the back of the shirt although you can also hide the seam under your armpit if you don't like the seam it doesn't really matter I am just slip stitching along till we get to the end trying to make sure that the fabric stays lined up And that is what the back of the shirt will look like. You'll have a slight seam, but I don't mind that. Like I, that's what I'm going for. I wanted to have a seam. But a more raised seam, if you want a more raised seam, you can just do a, a single crochet crossed. Or... If you don't like the way this looks, you can put this on the inside of the garment. So you make the seam on this side and then you flip it around. That's cool too because there's no right or wrong side of the fabric. Move my stitch marker because it's doing its job. We are almost to the end and it looks like so far everything is still staying lined up for the most part. Oops. The first time I've had a problem with this yarn splitting was right there. Which is good because that means it's not a splitty yarn. Although this is the same cotton sprout base that I worked with in the past. It's just a different colorway, which, like, hey. I was so excited working this up. I was going around the house, I was showing everybody, I was like, look at how pretty this is. Look at the colors. Look at how pretty it is. Yeah. I get really excited about color. Now, for this part, because, uh, like, I... One of the biggest parts of my body is around my chest. So, for me, this took 
almost two, two of the balls to make just the top. So that's us keeping track of how many skeins we're using. Oops, I almost made a single crochet there. Take out that last stitch marker. Now to the end. Leave a tail to sew in later. Alright. So, this is what... Put my hook somewhere where it's not going to roll. That's the back of the shirt. I like the way that looks, but if you don't like the way that looks, you can flip it around inside out. You have a mild seam, but nothing, nothing extreme. All right, now we have to measure where we're going to put the straps because we're going to do the straps next. Now I'm going to give you some advice with the straps. Make them slightly shorter than what you think you need. Just a hair shorter because the weight of the dress is going to pull. Because cotton is not, it's not heavy, but it's it's also, it's a little bit heavy. Like it's it has a weight to it. So when this is on your body, it's going to, the, the, the bottom part of the tank top, which is going to be kind of a skirt, kind of ish, is going to be heavier than this part. So it's going to pull on this a little bit. So your, your, your um, straps are going to stretch a little bit. So we just want to make sure that they are a little bit shorter than you think you need. And to measure them on your garment, what I want you to do is put this on right now. Put it on. And then I want you to put stitch markers where your bra strap generally lies on your body. Okay. Put it all the way on. Make sure that seam is pretty much in the center of your back. Okay. Wherever your bra straps lie, or where you like your bra straps to lie, put a stitch marker on either side. And that's what I'm doing right now. You want them in your body far enough towards the your neck area that they're not going to slip off your shoulders incessantly and drive you crazy. Okay? There's my stitch markers right there. Let me find the center. I totally measured. See? My seam wasn't in the right spot, so now i got to figure out how many rows this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Twenty-six 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 26 rows apart. So I'm going to make sure that I find the center by folding it in half at the seam. Okay. Here's my center of my shirt. And then, because I know that between these two stitch markers is 26, 26 stitches, or 26 rows. I'm gonna go 13 rows to either side. Line up the center of my shirt with the seam in the back. That is where I will put my bra, or my strap, not my bra. And then of course, if you don't want to count that way, just go like this, fold it in half there, put the second one there. Bam, that's where we're gonna have our straps. So whatever that number is, where you think you want it spaced apart, for me it's 26 rows. Just make sure you find the center and then divide the number 26 and a half and then go that many rows on either side. That's where we're going to put our straps. Now you can use the same color that you've already used for this. You can do um, an alternate color. I'm kind of thinking I want my straps to be purple. So 
And I also kind of think I want to put like a purple edge around it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull out the purple. I'm going to switch out the speckled balls in my ball holder. Try to find the center of my ball. I was deceiving, that was the outside of the ball. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna put a, a little border around the top of the shirt. If you want to have this part a little um, tighter to your body here, if you feel like if you're very well endowed and this part of your body is way bigger than like the flat part of your chest, you can go ahead and add a little bit of decrease around here. I'm not gonna do that because I'm fine, like I'm good. So I'm gonna start at the back where the seam is so that all the ends are woven in in the same spot. And I think I'm just gonna do, because we've already done half double crochets, I think I'm just going to continue with the half doubles around the top part of this where we're going to put our straps and do half double crochets. For every row just put a half double crochet. And that should give you a little bit of a decrease. Or for every row, if you just want it to be flat, put um, two half double crochets in every row. Just try to make sure you're not adding too many or taking too many away so that it fits you. It's not too tight around there or it's not too baggy to where it's ruffling, you know. And this will also give us a nice anchor for where we put our straps. And the straps are going to be kind of cool. Um, they're going to be a split strap. So the bottoms of the straps where it connects to the garment is going to be like forked a little bit like this. So it'll go like this and like this and then we'll lead up into a main strap. It's really a cute, it's a cute uh, design. All right, I'm just gonna put half double crochets for the border on the top of this all the way around the top. And then when I get back around here, I will come back and we will get started on the straps. Now see, don't that purple just make it pop? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I decided to do the purple instead of continuing with that beautiful speckly color it just makes the purple pop so we're almost back to the beginning I'm just putting half double crochets all the way around the rim and then we're gonna come around to the well we're not gonna come around to the back we're gonna mark the back of our shirt as well for straps but we're gonna do something we're not gonna like line them up perfectly I just slip stitch to join at the first half double crochet. Now, line up your center stitch marker with your, your back seam. Your back seam. Line it up. Lay it flat. Now see, these are our front. That's for our front strap. Where are my stitch markers? Alright, now what we're going to do is the front, if you look at your, any of your garments, any of your like thin strap type shirts, your straps aren't lined up perfectly. They come in 
just a little bit. So we're going to actually come in an inch from where our stitch markers are here. We're going to come in about an inch and we're going to mark it there. So for us about an inch, let's see, is one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go five stitches over from where the front stitch marker is on the back panel. See how we have a stitch marker here? We went five stitches over on the back panel and put a stitch marker there. We have this one. One, two, three, four, five. And that will just help the strap stay on our bodies a little more instead of like going off of our shoulders. All right. Exit, exit the room, dogs. Lock that door, they still popped it open. All right now, you can go down a hook size if you want with this. Um, I think I'm actually going to go down a hook size and get a smaller hook. The reason being is I want my straps to be more sturdy. I want them to fit a little better. So I'm going to grab my four millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to start at the front. Looking at the garment, this is my right side, but this will be the left side of our garment. So it will be the front left panel. I'm going to slip stitch to join at the stitch marker. And then we are going to chain. What I want you to measure. This is another thing where you're going to be measuring on your body or make it easier. Measure your bra. Take your bra, lay it on the table. Measure how long the strap is. If you're comfortable with that, go ahead and make your, your Bentley. Make your strap that length. So for me, I'm going to say... Eighteen inches for my strap. So I'm gonna chain for about eighteen inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Does anybody else sing the Sesame Street song? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, just me. That's 50. Change 50. I have about 13 and a half inches. Let me go to 75. I'm going to try it at 70. Like I said, I want my straps a little shorter than what you think you need them to be because they are going to stretch. At 18, when I say the number was 70, let me write that down before I forget. And make sure you write down your numbers so that you can keep track. So that both your straps are the same length. Now, I'm going to go careful not to turn this. Make sure you, your strap is pretty much flat because we're going to be working back into it. And attach it at that back stitch marker. Now we're going to do four rows of this strap. Uh, just slip stitch it there and then chain one. So you can open your garment if you want. Oh see look at that's perfect. The strap is as big as it is it the strap is the same length as the garment if I lay it flat. Go outside and stop coming in and out. Right, I relock the door. Puppies, man, They're worse than the kids. All right, so we are going to 
do half double crochets again going up the strap whatever your number was for me it was 70 you need 70 half double crochets here you want to make sure you have an even amount Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't think we're going to need four rows for the strap. I don't want the straps too thick. Actually, frog it back. I messed up. All right, slip stitch to join here. Let's take it back, we'll slip stitch to join. We have 70 stitches. All right, slip stitch to join at the stitch marker. I forgot a step. Because we're making half double crochets, you're gonna wanna take and go over two stitches and slip stitch there too. That's giving us the half double crochet. So it's it's attached thicker here. So it's attached like a half double crochet is attached at the strap or at the the base of your shirt. Then continue with the half double crochets. I'm sorry that was my fault. I was putting the cart before the horse. I was trying to hurry up and get this strap done because I'm excited. So yeah. So slip stitch where the stitch marker is and then slip stitch again two spaces over so that you have a thicker connection here. Okay, because what, what we're doing is this is going to be a split sleeve so we're going to come out this way as well. You'll see. My light on my camera keeps trying to adjust because oh I see purple so I'm gonna make your video your thing more blue. So I keep adjusting my light warmer so it's like more of a natural color. So we're just half double crocheting up the side the, the chain to the sleeve. So, so the strap is looking like so far, and I'm really glad I went down a hook size. I went from a five millimeter to a four millimeter, and I that really gives a little bit more structure to the strap. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna finish off the strap in the half double crochets. And then when we get time to slip stitch to the first part of the where we chained out of, you're just going to go two over from where the stitch marker is. And we are going to slip stitch. Now, we're going to slip stitch three over, okay? One... So here's our strap. Actually, let's slip stitch four over. One more. Now, we're going to chain ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This is our strap. We're going to go up eight stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and join make sure not to turn it with a slip stitch so that it looks like that okay now we are going to single crochet up and over 
until we get to eight stitches from the other side. Okay. Single crochet in. This little fork part here should be towards the center of your chest. So this should be on the side of your arm and this should be on the side towards your chest. Because you're going to have to do this again for the second sleeve. And you just want to make sure that your fork is on the right side. Your fork should be, that skinnier part should be towards the middle of your chest. Or on the back side of your garment, it should be towards the middle of your back. Just doing single crochets up and over. I notice the single crochets have a lot less stretch to them. So if you put single crochets in something, a lot of times it will add um, strength to a specifically a strap so that it doesn't stretch as much. So that's why we're doing single crochets up the center. And if you don't like the look of the the open this part, you can just make this three rows of half double crochet if you want. Or you want a wider strap, you know how to fix that. Add more rows or make longer stitches. I'm heading towards the back of the garment. I want to make sure I don't go down too far because we remember we need those eight stitches that are going to be left empty. We should have eight stitches left before we reach the bottom. I'm going to chain ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go over four. Towards the back. Make sure you're going towards your, the center of your back. Go over four stitches, one, two, three, and four. Slip stitch. And go over two more. We'll skip one and go over to the second one from that. Slip stitch again. Chain one and turn. And now we are going to work the skinny part right here. And we're going to do half double crochets in the chain. My chain got twisted a little bit, but that's fine. And just make sure that you have 10 half double crochets in your, your stitch right there, in your chain. Make sure your chain's not twisted, like I did mine. Half double crochets. In every chain going up. See how I twisted that. I always twist my chains. I, I don't know why. It's just the way I crochet. Alright, now I'm going to go up. And over the sleeve again with another row of half double crochets. 
And then when you get to the other side, you're going to also put the half double crochets in the chain on the front of the garment. Or the back, depending on what side you're working on. And see how that strap has like that cute little detail right there. I just love that. I love that. I think it's so cute. Alright, keep on going up and over the strap. So that's a nice wide strap. I mean, it's not too wide. It's wide enough to, you know, hold the garment together. That's all we care about. I can hear the TV in the other room. And I'm just curious what I'm watching in the other room. Apparently I left the TV on. Cue the dogs. When the weather is warm, they get extra feisty. Almost there. This is probably one of the quietest tutorials I've ever done because I'm trying to save my voice. Alright, we're to the part. Where we're approaching our our chain strand and we're going to do exactly like we did on the other side we're just going to make sure we put a half double crochet in every chain try not to twist the chain making sure that we have 10 stitches in there And then go over to from where we attach there and slip stitch. And when you weave in this end, you can make this extra long and just really like sew in those stitches a little bit. So if you want extra strength, I don't think we're gonna have a problem with that popping, but like if you want, you can leave an extra little bit and just go in and out of here a lot to reinforce it, but you don't have to do that. There's our first strap. See how the back is a little bit over from the front? That's exactly what we want. Okay, now go ahead, rewind the video, repeat that process on this side, on these stitch markers, and um, I'll be back to show you the bottom of the shirt. All right, so we got the straps done. I'm gonna go back to the five millimeter hook because now I'm working on the bottom part of the, the tank top we're gonna get started. Now, make sure your sleeves are both the same length before you move on, try it on at this point. Because you don't wanna start the bottom of your garment 
and the sleeves be too long or whatever. You want to make sure it fits now. Because <laughs> trust me, I've done this in the past. Made the straps too long and then I hated the whole thing and wouldn't wear it. So try on the straps now. Make sure everything fits you the way you like it to fit you before you move on. Because it's easier to frog the straps now and make them shorter or longer if you need to than it will be after you finish the entire garment and you're already like all in and like frustrated and all that. So. Alright, so, I gotta swear, alright, a dog just came into the room and I don't see a dog. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna attach the yarn and that back seam, and I am going to do the purple, what we're doing here is a faux belt. We're just gonna add a little purple around here that gives the impression that there's a belt or a belt detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of rows about an inch thick, maybe a little, you can do wider if you want, you can do two inches thick, depending on how much yarn we actually use, of just double crochet in the round. So I'm attaching right there where the, um, right along the side of the seam. I'm gonna attach with a slip stitch. I'm gonna chain one, and then we are going to double crochet all the way around this row and we're going to do this for a couple of rows until we either run out of yarn or until we decide that our belt is long enough because we like to make our shirts our own right so i always encourage that make the shirt your own you can do whatever color you want here you don't have to put a belt in at all you can come along and do a couple of rows with this yarn you can you do whatever you want whatever color you want if you're doing your shirt all in one color I mean that's cool too I'm working with what Premier Yarn sent me so we're getting creative and we're doing like stripes along the the bottom but I wanted to start with the purple because um, it brings the straps down to the bottom of the shirt and it makes everything look more you know planned So just take and double crochet all the way around this row. When you come here, slip stitch to join, do another row, another two rows, however many rows you want for the belt, <laughs> which is not actually a belt, but it gives it the belt, a belt detail. It separates your top half of your body with your stomach, so it gives it more of like an empire style waist to the shirt. All right, well, you guys know how to double crochet, so you guys don't need to watch this part. I'll go around and meet you at the beginning. All right, so I made it to the end of the row. Just going to slip stitch to join. Chain up. Keep on doing I'm going to keep doing double crochets. I'm going to do a couple rows of this. This is not going to be the entirety of the bottom of the... the now, if you want this to be a straight tank top, you can just keep making this in circles. If you have, like, a... A smaller stomach area you could actually just keep going in circles and do it this way but what what I'm doing is more like a handkerchief bottom so I'm doing a couple of rows of the belt <laughs> <coughs> and then we're going to we're gonna start making the um, the handkerchief type bottom so I think I'm gonna do two more rows of the purple because I think I have enough to do two more rows of this. So I'll have three rows total for the belt. And then we're going to come on and we're going to add corners. And we're going to start increasing so that the bottom is handkerchief style. And um, that's just going to mean we're going to have four corners where we're increasing. And we'll come back to that after the three rows of the belt. Alright. Wow, it seems like that part of the shirt went really fast. I just tried it on. It looks super cute. <laughs> I'm super excited. I gotta be real honest, like at this point of the shirt, it would be a really cute crop top. As is, no additional adjustments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stitch markers off that I haven't taken off yet from when we attach the sleeves because I am going to use them once again. What we need to do is we need to figure out how many stitches we have around the bottom. 
we are going to divide that number by four and put a stitch marker in each one of those four places so that we don't have to keep counting. Okay, so pause again because I'm not going to count all these stitches. There's a lot of stitches here. <laughs> I'm not going to count all these on camera. Um, count each one of your stitches and then divide that number by four and put a stitch marker in each one of those four places because that's where we're going to be doing our increases. All right, so I have 172 stitches around. Divided that by four, so every 43 stitches, I am going to put a stitch marker. And this is gonna probably confuse the heck out of some of you because we need it in equal spots and our beginning of the row is in the middle of our back. We're gonna actually take the number 43 and divide that in half, which is 21 and a half stitches. So from either side of the seam on your back, go actually an eighth of the way that way. So because it, we're gonna put them at the 43 stitches at for mine, your number's gonna be different. Let's try this again so that I make sense. I have, what did I say, 100 and whatever the number was. <laughs> 172 I think 172 stitches all the way around I divided that by 4 and that is 43 stitches so I need every 43 stitches to have a point but because the points are going to go along the sides I need to actually divide that number in half and count it from the center seam which is 21 and a half so we'll go for 22 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Stitch marker. Now, from that point on, I do the 43. Okay? So this is this, this is going to give me my... This will give me my 43 across here. Because we took half of the 43 on this side, half on the other side. And we'll put the other stitch marker across from that. This will be our first 43. That makes sure that our points are kind of even around our body. Now, if we were doing the point in the front and the point in the back and the two points on the side, you would just put a stitch marker in the front across the back. You could actually fold it in half and just do it that way. Put the stitch markers so that they're across from each other. That would work. But we're putting the, the it's handkerchief style. So it's going to be, let me grab a piece of paper. The square is actually going to have the points along. This is like the, our side. So the points are going to go along the side that way. This is the side. This is the front of your stomach. So because of that, we have to make sure that they're spaced evenly across the front of us, the back of us, and then across the sides. Okay. Oops. Snagging my yarn. All right. So now we can go around and count our 43 stitches from this one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Wait a minute, what did I say? 23, 23, 24, 25. 43 is the number. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 1, 2, 3. 43. Have another stitch marker. 43 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 1, 2, 3. side to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 41, 2, 3. Alright, that should be our four corners. And then there should be 40 
two stitches <laughs> or 43 stitches between those last the first one and the last one we put in right now your stitch markers should line up across from each other on the bottom that's where our increases are going to be at okay now I'm going to choose different color from the purple I think I'm going to go back to the speckle and move stuff out of the way I'm going to go back to the speckle and start the first row and I'm just going to start again where that seam is this is going to be that you're going to repeat this row until the shirt is as long as you want. And I'm going to give you options <coughs> because we are going to be now creating a square that is going to be growing outward. So we're, we're basically building a blanket in the, in the square. So it's like you're building a square blanket with the hole cut out, which is where your body's going to go. And it's going to continue to grow as a square outward like a handkerchief would. And if at any point it feels like it's getting too wide and not enough long, you're still going to put the increases at the points, but you can put a decrease in the center of the flat parts. Okay, I will explain that better in a minute. We're going to do the first row where we're going to attach our yarn. And you can do whatever color combination you want. I'm going to stripe in the colors that were gifted to me from Premier Yarns. I'm going to stripe in some of the yellow. I'm going to stripe in the purple. I'm going to stripe in the speckled. And I'm going to st strike, stripe, stripe in the, the bluish color. And then they also gave me the color cardinal, which I don't know if I'm going to put in here because there's not really a cardinal in here. There's like this orangey color. I may or may not. It depends on how much yarn I actually need for this. But... I'm going to randomize how thick the stripes are. That part is entirely up to you. You can do thin stripes, you can do thick stripes, you can do all one color in the bottom. You can do a speckled pattern on the bottom, whatever you want, whatever, whatever your heart desires. For me, I'm going to stripe in at random stripes. All right, so we are going to chain one, as we always do, and put in a double crochet. Okay, now we're working. We're just going to keep going in the round, but we're going to create a square. And I'm crocheting over the top of my tails because I hate weaving those in later. So we're just going to double crochet across until we get to that first stitch marker. Please enjoy this moment of zen from the wind chime on the front porch. And the Jingle Bell stitch marker that is on my shirt. Bless you, Juju. In case anyone heard her sneeze. She's sick too, by the way. Mr. Cinnamon gave me and Juju the COVID for Valentine's Day. One gift I wish I could return. <laughs> anyway, double crocheting across. And when we get to the stitch marker, oops, if I can do the stitch correctly. When you get to the stitch marker, the stitch that the stitch marker is in, we are going to do an increase, just a small one. We're going to do double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now I can remove this stitch marker because I don't need it, but if you have a hard time seeing your stitches, you can, wow, open. There we go. You can move this up if you want because you're going to keep using that stitch as an increase throughout the rest of the shirt. And then in the next stitch, we're going to just double crochet across to that next and this is going to be just a slight, just a slight peak right here. Can't even really see it, but trust me, it will grow. And it will create a square as we go on. And 
And every time we hit a stitch marker, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to double crochet till we get there. And then in the stitch that the stitch marker is in, we are going to put a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. This is our setup row. The next row is going to be our repeat until the shirt is the length that we want it to be. <coughs> Water drink. There we go. Keep my uh, voice box working. A weird noise on the porch. Almost sound like a duck. Probably some bird. <coughs> or the cat. The cat across the street that insists on using our, our porch as its toilet. Because they refuse to let the cat in the house. We're not here to talk about that cat. But it could be that cat on my porch. Oh, excuse me. All right. I'm going to show you this last increase. And then we're going to pause the video, and I will meet you back there where we started the row, wherever that's at. So by the time you get done with this row, you should have four increases. So we're at the stitch marker. Let me get that out of the way ahead of time. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Continue doing this until you get to the end of the row. And then we'll be right back. All right, here is the end of the setup row. And then you're going to slip stitch to join, chain one, put a double crochet in that same stitch again. Go up, keep going, keep doing what we were doing, just double crochet. This is going to be your infinity row, okay? You're going to repeat this until infinity. <laughs> you're going to repeat it until the, the garment is as big or as long as you want. Now. This is going to make, like I explained already, this is going to make the shirt go out. If you have a long torso and you want the shirt to be kind of long, to prevent the uh, warpings that sometimes can occur on points when you do a pointed increase, you know, like the corners from going out, if you want that to stop increasing but you want it to still have the points after a certain point then what you would do is at the center points between the two peaks at that what did I say 12 and a half stitches that I had to count 21 and a half stitches you would put two double crochets together although that number is going to change anyway I'm confusing the heck out of myself at the center point between those two points, put a decrease. So two double crochets together in every row if you want it to stop getting wider at some point and you just want to add length. That is how you would do that. Um, one of the tank tops that I designed, I can't remember the name of it, um, it had the point in the front and the back. 
and a lot of people made it into dresses and they made it into very long garments and it just kept getting wider and wider and wider because the point is making the point but it's also adding increased stitches and if at some point you want it to stop, like you want it to stop going out so much, but you still want length, still do the increases at the corners, but at the center point, where's my other point? Here's my two points. Somewhere here, just do two together. Double crochet two together, and you can stop it from growing wider, but it will still grow in length. All right, so now here we are. We are at the increase point. We're at this this little double crochet increase. So what we're gonna do is make sure that you put, make sure you put your uh, your double crochet in the stitch right before, and when you get into that chain one space, in the chain one space, put a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then in the very next stitch, put a double crochet. We're gonna continue doing that for as many rows as you need. It's just gonna give it a handkerchief style. These points will eventually get more pointy and come down more like that. You should always have four points of increase on the bottom of this, no matter how many rows you do. It will keep getting wider and more handkerchiefy. But if you want to make it, I don't know, past like I don't know, past a certain point. You wanted to stop growing wide, you just wanted to grow long. Do the increases in the corner, but also put a decrease in the center, and it will just even out the stitches and still give you the points. If that makes sense. If you like it, keep getting bigger and more blousey, just add your, uh, ignore those instructions and just keep adding your increases on the four corners. You can change out colors to do stripes, which is what I'm gonna do. You can do this base all in one color, which is perfectly fine. All you're doing for the next however many rows you decide to put in is making that handkerchief look. So you are going to, and I'm gonna have to switch to my third ball of this in a minute. Um, make sure you put the increases on those four corners. One double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in that same stitch. All right, I think you guys can handle it from here. Uh, I, I have total faith in you. We'll do this one last corner here and uh, make sure you understand what I'm saying. This is a pretty easy to remember. You're just double crocheting across. And for the first couple of rows, the increase point is going to be easy to miss. So just make sure that you're remembering that it's there. And as the garment grows longer, those points will get bigger. Or more obvious that they're there. Yeah. I gotta add the third ball of the speckles in. I can find the center. I know you're there somewhere. There it is. And then when we get to the point, I'm crocheting over that end where I just attached the two yarns, but 
you just put your double crochet, chain one, double crochet in that hole. That's your increase. And keep on moving along. Double crochet until you get to the corners. Add your increase. Keep going round and round and round you go until you find that it's long enough and you're happy. And then um, you can add, if you have any of your belt color left or your strap color left, you can add a single crochet border around the bottom. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or not. I'm just going to come back when I'm done with the garment and let you know what I decided to change, if anything, in regards to the, the colors and all that. And that's that's it for this tutorial. Like that's that's the end of it. What you have to do, you just keep adding on to the row till it's long enough. That it's as easy as that. The hardest part was trying to get the the sleeves on. <laughs> like that's it. So I will be back in a little bit. Well, I'll be back in a second of your time. It'll probably be tomorrow on my time to show you the rest of this shirt as it is finished. So in the process of filming this tutorial, I lost something on the last section that I filmed when I was done with the dang tank top. Lost a whole clip. So that was pretty much the end of the tutorial. But I wanted to come on and show you guys the final product, even though you already saw it at the beginning. So I weaved in the ends. These are the sleeves. I did several rows of the bottom, creating the handkerchief style with the peak going out on the four spots on the shirt. Okay, so we have the two front peaks and the two back peaks. I worked in a whole bunch of the colors. I ended up using six or seven balls total of the yarn for this. So there's the top part. It's the bottom part. And see after the belt, I did spotted, I did yellow, spotted again pink spotted blue spotted and I trimmed it out in purple so there you have it thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I will see you tomorrow